Hello everyone, this is Adam for RealHomeRecording.com. In this video, I want to talk about buffer size settings and the differences between buffer sizes when recording versus buffer sizes when mixing and mastering. So, what the hell is buffer size? Basically, it is a amount of time that your computer and your sound card, your interface, can take audio in, this is like the elementary explanation for it, it can take this information in and record it without the computer basically having to deal with a lot of processing. And uh, the higher the buffer setting, the more processing it can do. And the lower the buffer, the faster your processor has to be. And I'm not talking about gigahertz or anything like that, but I do mean that your entire system has to work in conjunction. So your motherboard, everything in the chain, your USB chipset plays in to this. So basically the idea is that you want to get the lowest buffer without getting clicks and pops. And your interface itself also determines how low of a buffer you can get set. So if you take a look, I'm going to actually, um, well, I had the screen up, so I may as well show it. If you look at this, it says 44100, and I'm using an Audient ID14 interface right now. And uh, you can see it says request, by the way, this program is called Reaper, request block size. Now this is actually in relation to the buffer setting. So right now I have it, I have it at 512 because I'm not recording anything important where I need a high buffer. I actually have this set for voiceovers where I don't need, don't need a high buffer setting or a low buffer setting, I should say. So what I'll do is normally I'll hit ASIO configuration. I already actually have my setup screen available right now. So I'm recording, so you're seeing this go on right now, um, but I'm actually recording to my capture software, not through this system. But um, anyway, what I would do in this software is go to the setup menu and your control panel software will be different depending on your, inter your interface, but these are all pretty much universal terms. And under setup, I'm going to go down here to where it says set ASIO buffer size. And from here, I can choose which ones I want. And there's an automatic setting, which is okay, but I want to actually set this to whatever I want. Now for recording purposes, I would set it to the lowest that I can get away with, which right now is 256. That might not actually be low enough depending on what you're recording. So Audion has a cool little thing which lets you set different things. Now, I'm not going to change this, but I could set this to minimum. Right now, I have it on standard. I could set it on minimum, and then that would open up more options down here. Now, what some of you may not know is if you set a higher sample rate, that allows you to set the lowest possible buffer setting for recording, which you may need. Although, for most purposes, somewhere around 128 should be enough, but where this really comes into play and where this really comes in handy with knowing like what interface to buy and what features you have, if you have either a PCI interface, which offers the lowest buffer settings, the lowest latency possible, or they have Thunderbolt, interfaces out now, which are basically external PCIe interfaces. They have the lowest possible latency, and you can get down to like 32. The lowest this one has is 64 samples, but you can get down to like 32. I think that's the lowest it goes, where you only have a latency of like one millisecond round trip, which is fast. I mean, it's so fast that you can record vocals, you can record a voiceover, and you can monitor your DAW with zero latency plugins so you can actually have effects going and it won't sound like comb filtering is what I use to describe it, where you can actually hear a slight reverb of your voice. So like, for example, this, the way this interface works is you can play back audio 
and also monitor audio that's going to the interface, but the interface is actually playing back. Whatever audio that you're recording, it's actually just playing back what the hardware is sending in. So it's like it, they keep it all analog so there's no delay. But if you need to go into the DAW to get an effect, like let's say a reverb, then you're going to actually have the DAW inside of the signal. And that's where your latency settings come in to play. And the, like I said, the issue with that is you're going to have a delay and that might confuse you if you're the one singing or if you're playing guitar through an amp simulator plugin. That's where latency becomes a big issue. So, like I said, you want to record with the lowest settings you can get away with without having clicking and popping issues, and you'll hear them right away. Um, so, the best interfaces, from my understanding, are the RME Babyface, the RME 800. Their RME has like the best drivers out there out of all the companies, in my opinion. M, M Audio used to, but over the years, not so much. RME, top-notch guys, and uh, Audion is also a really good company when it comes to this stuff, but your system may not be able to handle the low buffer settings. So you really need to just try this out for yourself, record, like, let's say, four or five minutes worth of material, and then make sure everything sounds good without the clicks and pops because that's where you're going to run into problems and the clicking and popping is not good at all. It actually sounds like a record player clicking and popping and that's not good in the age of digital. So like I said, you want to set this to the lowest you can get away with when recording. But for mixing and mastering, we can set it as high as you care to um, the only big difference is if you set it really high, what's going to happen is when you hit the play button, it's going to take a half second or a second to queue up in the buffer. And that might be okay for you. The, the higher the buffer, the more you can add your plugins on. And a lot of plugins do require buffer. And actually, you wouldn't even have a low buffer setting for a lot of plugins because you can't. You actually can't because, again, just like when you record, you have clicks and pops. You'll also have clicks and pops during playback if your buffer isn't set high enough. Now, typically, I will set mine to like 2048. But if you need even more, you can go on this interface. You can go all the way up to this, which it's hard to read because I have my, my screen all scrunched up. But it's like 8182, I believe. 8192? I don't know. But you can set it really, really high, but with the side effect of when you, whenever you hit that playback button, there's a delay. But besides that, I don't think there's any other side effects you, besides the fact that you just need to remember to change it back to a low buffer whenever you record. And by the way, I highly recommend when you're recording to bounce your tracks so that whenever you're recording something, you don't have like 24 tracks going at the same time because that can also affect how low your buffer setting goes. So uh, to bounce tracks, you know, you can under Reaper go down to render. And then I believe there's a setting on here that allows you to just add the audio. But what I'll typically do is just render this and then I'll dra drag and drop the file into another recording session, um, which may be the long way, but whatever. That's how I like to do it. And, you know, this also allows me, if I'm recording something, I could technically start mixing already, you know, as if I had a recording equalizer or recording compressor. I, I have that ability to render that in the track and then basically when I'm recording, I have one track for the mix down and then I have another track for what I'm recording. And it works really well for me. That's, that's how I've been doing it for many, many years. And I've never come in, I never came into problems. You could even render a track out and have like, let's say mix stems, almost like you have a master going so that like, let's say you're recording somebody and you're like, all right, I want to hear more bass guitar. You can just raise the volume of that up. 
I want to hear more drums. You can raise the volume of that up. But uh, again, make sure your buffer settings are proper. And this is something that I completely forgot about because I'm at my advanced levels of being an audio engineer. And I remember having a deal with buffers and not knowing what the hell they were and, uh, you know, setting it too high. And then the musicians wondering, hey, man, why is, why is my music like delayed so much? <laughs> why is my voice delayed so much? It's because of the buffer setting. And uh, that actually leads me to talk about one more thing. Like I said earlier about your interface playing back audio through the analog stages if you're monitoring through the interface. Um, you might want to make sure you're doing that if you have a performer. And I would even suggest doing that unless you have a Thunderbolt interface or unless you have a PCIe interface. You're going to run into those problems with USB or FireWire interfaces. Unfortunately, USB just isn't fast enough. I don't know about USB 3. I think USB 3.1 is basically the same as Thunderbolt. So you, if you have a three, USB 3.1 interface, you might be able to get away with that. And you will know this if when you go to record a voiceover and you can play it back through the doll, not through the regular interface. So basically what I would do, bringing back my control panel software or whatever they call it here. Um, see how it says doll down here? So if I were in Reaper, Let's just try this. Hopefully it doesn't mess up my recording. I'll hit record arm and you see how that's going right now? Now, right now I can't hear that. You, you, and you'll see that. See, there's no there's no um, lights going right here. But if I, if I do this, which is my record monitoring on, now it's lit up. And now what I would do is hit mute on this so that I'm only hearing what my DAW playback is. And I'm going to actually probably mute this if it's capturing anything on my capture software. But you can see, like I said, you know, we have over here on our left is our analog output, which has no delay. This will have a delay. You'll know that if you, especially if you bump the buffer setting up to a higher point, you'll hear the delay very easily because I'm getting what's ever on the DAW. And I could add a plug-in. And the Slate Virtual Mix Rack is a good example of this. I'll add a plug-in, and the Virtual Mix Rack has no latency. If you look down here, how it says zero out of zero SPLS. So it's a zero latency plug-in. So I can add effects to my voice, or I could add, you know, I could add, uh, well, I wouldn't add two of these. I would add like a compressor, then I would do an EQ, and then maybe I'll I have like one of the preamps down here or whatever. These are all zero latency plugins, and there's other ones out there too. But this is just an example. And then I could monitor my effects in real time without any delay. And that's how you test it out. Is uh, you'll hear a delay right away. Like I said, as soon as you plug your headphones in and you listen to just the dull you will hear a delay unless you have a very low latency interface. And that's why those interfaces cost a lot of money because you can have that real-time playback 32 samples or whatever and uh, get away with it, which one day I will own a Thunderbolt interface. But right now, USB 2.0 satisfies my needs. And for now, I'll just you know disable... Disable the doll, mute it, disable it on here, and unmute that. And then basically the way the system works is it's called plug-in delay compensation. So that if you do record even with a very high buffer, your doll will put the tracks, put the audio where it needs to go. Um, let's say some dolls may not have that feature, and those dolls are terrible. So don't even use them. And like I said, though, I could have such a huge buffer. As long as I'm not monitoring off the doll, it'll sound fine through the headphone output. It'll sound, sound fine through the line output because I'm monitoring this right here. 
I'm not monitoring the DAW return, which has to go through the ADC, the analog to digital converter, and then into the DAW, process that way, and then come back out of the DAW and into the digital to analog converter. So that's a bunch of different steps that you don't have to go through if you monitor this way. This video is a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but I hope I explain what buffer is and the differences between mixing versus recording buffers and also kind of what this whole system works as. And uh, if you're in the market for another interface, I highly would consider one of the newer ones and even waiting for the newer ones that are basically PCI, but uh, definitely check out Thunderbolt and or USB 3.1 interfaces because those are the wave of the future coming back to the past. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.